Alright, so we're back. Yeah, my videos are just jumping back and forth. We're back working on this guy. Um, don't remember what I last did, but last little, where the video last left off. But, um, I wrapped the manifold. I showed the manifold. I, I wrapped this uh, in the fiberglass. So we gotta try and keep as much heat out of the, the engine bay, if you wanna call it that, as possible. Cause there's side panels that go on here, so. I still gotta get a blanket for this turbo. Um, I just just stuck that pipe on there because why not? Um, I weld I welded the insert in for the factory O2 sensor right there, and then I'm gonna stick the wide band into the turbo for now, which I got over there, which is supposed to be for my truck, but this is gonna get it for now. Um, yeah, I rerouted that radiator hose up because I didn't feel like making a new outlet. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. So it's it's lower than the top of the radiator, so we shouldn't have an air pocket, I hope. But that kind of that kind of worked out nice. So now, I mean, I moved the fuel pump to there instead of under the fuel tank because we got we got more clearance around that turbo now where it's going to be hot. So I just have to heat shield the tank and. Put the blanket on there and I'll probably make a heat shield that bolts to it as well so we don't heat the transmission up because it's really close to that. Um, yeah, and I just kind of taped up a couple of the wires because from the factory they weren't because this was on the interior. Um, they didn't really have tape there so yeah, I just kind of cleaned that up a little bit because the wiring got a little messed up. Yeah, yeah, it's fine now. So. This guy was the original intake boot, and this is backwards, so it, there's a little bit of play here, but I'll, I'll make that up. But, yeah, this originally went, went like that, I believe, but kind of kind of works out real, real handy like that. Puts it right in line, beautiful, the front of the motor. Um, so I'm thinking just to run a straight piece. I'm going to, uh, this is too... I can get away with two and a half inch in there. I really only need, I should really only run like two inch charge pipe, I guess, for this. The amount of boost and the size of this motor and turbo, I, two inch is fine, but I might as well do that. It's two and a half inch, that's what I gotta run. Um, so I'll just run a straight piece there, another 90 here, and I'll probably shorten this guy. Um, or maybe, uh, cut it and re-weld it, angled, um, and then just have it come into there, I, no intercooler or nothing on here, um, I'm gonna try to run less than 10 pounds, the, the wastegate on these is roughly set to 10 pounds, but what I'm gonna try to do is, uh, put a spring probably off of here that way to... It's effectively changing the spring inside of the actuator, but you can't take this apart easily, so I'm going to do that. So hopefully we'll start low, because I don't know how this thing's going to act, because the other issue is this is, this is a mass airflow. It says map and mass airflow, so it's extra double annoying. Um, so this will probably end up here, I suppose. I can't, I don't have room really over there. I don't know, maybe I'll just wedge it in and call it a day. It'd be better if it was closer to the intake. But, I gotta do that. I hope that will behave okay under boost. I think this is just a hot wire math. It, uh, looks like it is. It's hard to see. Looks like it is, so I think it'll be okay with boost. Okay, I made a trip, so I got... I got charge piping fresh off the scrap pile. This stuff's actually really nice. Turn that into a 90. Bring it right alongside here. And then I think it's going to actually work out kind of perfect. So if I if I make this a 90, this is already, this is a 45 here. And we can use this to, well, to, to here where it's straight again. Then we can um, make this sort of a 45 as well and I think that'll actually work out it'll work out much better than I um than I thought I forget what size injectors those are like 200 cc or whatever something something in that region which way more than enough 
as an extra set of injectors for this thing. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. So basically, I'm going to try to make it so we only get like three, four pounds of boost, maybe, and uh, just see what happens. I don't know how this is going to react to boost yet. Um, people do boost them. Uh, in the trackers, I've seen videos. Most people seem to use one of the rising rate regulators that I really don't want to use because the fuel pressure gets crazy really fast, and that's those, those are just really bad. So I would much rather use the controller I'm trying to make to run some extra injectors, and which that's better than than the garbage pressure switch activated injector. All right, so I cut the stock fuel rail in half. Well, so basically we're going to have two injectors. I'm going to cut some metal out of here to uh, cap it again. So basically we're going to be able to run two injectors. This Here's the charge pipe um, from the guy. So we're going to drill two holes in here, make the seats for those injectors, and uh, just, you know, we'll make a stud and everything to mount this. So and this is right before it goes through the intake boot there. I don't know... I don't. I kind of don't like having the the uh, guy there. The uh, what do you call it? That that flexible thing. The old intake. I don't know if it's gonna like gas going through it, but we're gonna leave it. Um, so there's just enough room because the coolant hose from the radiator comes out right here. Well, overlapping a little bit, so I'm starting to lose some room real quick. But so this these are two 10 cc injectors. So um, 40 42 pounds we're gonna get out of both of them. They're 21 pounds each. I think that'll be enough extra fuel. All right, so we got the fuel controller uh, sort of done, I think, um, for now anyway. So basically the way it's gonna behave right now is like a rising rate like regulator, but a little fancier, a tunable one. Um, so, so this is the board, so we're running Arduino Nano um, to control everything. Uh, that's just the voltage regulator back there. Um, this relay is ridiculous for what I'm using it for, but it's the only one I had, so we're using it. Um, basically, this, where this alligator clip is, is going to go to the ECM on there, where the narrowband O2 sensor input is. That center terminal is where the actual narrowband voltage signal goes. So normally, it's just going to pass that straight through. Um, and as soon as this thing sees boost, it's going to switch the ECM's reading to this pin which has I can change the voltage but it's got half a volt on it which is basically 14.7 ish um so the compute so when we start adding fuel with this the computer doesn't see it as running rich and pull all the fuel um out of the main injectors um so basically how this works I just have one of the fuel injectors here um hooked up um, so right now, this monitor, that's the index value for the table, so this is sort of, this is the table here, so that's our gauge pressure, basically a boost, um, so ambient pressure, or vacuum, anyway, would be there, so zero is ambient pressure on here, um, and this is the duty cycle of the injector, basically, um, so 216 is 85% in, uh, duty, and that's basically how that is. So, how this works is, alright, so this this is connected to the, the oscilloscope, is connected to the injector, just to show the duty cycle. Um, so basically, this right gauge here, where that's in the center, is basically uh, ambient pressure. So that's vacuum, that's ambient, and here's boost. That you can hear the injector kicks on. So as soon as we see boost, that's what the ECM is going to see. So right now it would be displaying whatever the narrow band is. As soon as there's boost, it goes to 14.7. Down here, as we increase the boost, you can see the duty cycle increases. Doesn't show up great on here. Up to 85%. So that's how that goes. Um, it's pretty. I don't know, it didn't really take that long. It worked pretty well to make, and you can see the index as the boost increases. That's PSI, basically. Um, so I'm just using the power supply um, in place of the map sensor. Um, 
So yeah, this is just like a fancy rising rate regulator basically. If I wanted to, I could make the table, the array in here two dimensional. So I could have RPM and then a uh, map and then have a full table. Basically, maybe we'll do that. I don't really think we have to because people seem to be able to use some rising rate regulators fine. So this is a fancier version of that. So it should be okay. All right, going for a drive. I got my prototype additional injector driver on here. We blew up the first Arduino board, so I think it because it was sitting on the ignition coils. So here we go. Let's Alright, so that was a decent, decent little test of the new setup. Don't mind the tape. I'm still waiting on the correct couplers. So I can't really fully tune this until I have couplers because it just keeps blowing the tape off of here. And it, that just looks ridiculous. That's just terrible. So, um, other than that though, the controller seems to be working. I had a few issues. I blew up one of their Arduino boards. I don't know why, but it did. Um, I replaced it, and it seems to be fine now. The injectors seem to work. It's it's wanting a lot more fuel than I thought it was going to want. So, we have these on, like, maybe 60-70% duty cycle right from the start. And it doesn't seem to mind it. So, i got to find a spring to stick on that wastegate to maybe bring it down in the 5-pound region. Because I think it's going to want to make 10 pounds, which is too much to handle right now with everything. Um, I'm, this box I didn't want to use because it's bigger than it needs to be. Um, and it has holes in it and stuff from a different project. But uh, I might just use it for now. Um, and stick it next to the tank here or something. Uh, and I'll actually make nice wiring. This, I threw this on here just to test it. It wasn't a bad first test, I suppose. This injection system seems to work pretty well. I was just... I'm just worried about fuel sitting in here. It doesn't seem to affect the rubber, but it doesn't seem to have any residue after fuel sitting in it, so I don't think it's hurting it, but I don't know. It does seem where the only issue with this system is right after you're boosting, when you let off the throttle, it's very rich for a second because of that extra fuel, so I'm, I might include the TPS in the data that that looks at so that when it sees you pull the TPS off, um, it kills the injectors right away, rather than waiting till the boost pressure's gone, because, well, although it should react plenty quick, 
This should go vacuum right away. I don't know if that's affecting it or not. I mean, we're sensing the boost in the manifold after the throttle body, but I don't know. I gotta get a real plug for that. Didn't spit any oil out this time, but I should put a catch can on it eventually. Um, yeah. The, the welds on these pipes are annoying me because the welds uh, on the fuel injector mounts are much, much nicer that, than that. It looks like acetylene welding. I don't know. The, the pipe is... I didn't bother cleaning it, so I, that's probably why. It, whatever. Um, yeah. Not a bad little test. I want to make a nice video for this to put it in the, that DeBoss car show. We'll get there.